right, man. Mark Scante reporting. Good morning. So we're going to take a deep dive, deep dive. Hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on. This is LARPer, LARPer stuff. Come all LARPers, come into the room. Join me for a LARP session, a session of exposing rather dangerous LARPers. Uh, I, I, to me, I know for you guys, a lot of this is, a, is fun and games. To me, it's, um, it's a, a chore in cleaning up the internet. I like a safe place to hang out. I like to think that I'm on YouTube and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good guy doing good work, telling the truth. I, I like to believe that. I, and some of you will try to spin that and say, oh, no, Conti's a bad guy. And I'll show you some examples of that. But I find that, um, that there is, in fact, a, cor- a correlation between a couple of murders uh, that have occurred and really, really um, uh, egregious acts of, of aggression uh, towards other people as a result of people going down these online rabbit holes. Now, some have called it a death cult. Some have called it a blackmail ring, a, a uh, conspiracy uh, gang stalking ring. I call it all of the above. So we're going to talk about one, one particular one. I've covered it many times on the story, but we're closing in now. We're closing in. We're narrowing in, and we're getting more and more evidence because, hey, listen, I'm an evidence-based guy. You can say whatever you want. You can make up all kinds of ridiculous stories if you like to. But I base everything that I say, I have a, I have a recording in their own words, of them, in their own words, saying it. Right? None of this is me saying it. Right? And that's the phenomenon of YouTube. Right? What a great... You know, if you want to do investigative reporting and you want to base it on evidence, these guys, the three that I'm going to talk about, which is Dave Swaggart, he's the I had a dream bomber, the guy who created the video that he had a dream about about blowing up, about two reporters who were going to go and blow up the Port Neches, uh, uh, blow up uh, Corpus Christi, you know, flying a, a flamethrowing drone, that guy, right, Dan, uh, uh, Dave Swaggart. Thomas Schoenberger, who's kind of a, a, a behind-the-scenes kind of thug, kind of like a grunt, kind of, I'll fucking kill you, you motherfucker, I'm going to get you, you fucking cocksucker. Right, he's that, that evil, the evil fuck. They're all evil. And then there's Daniel Cromer. Daniel Cromer is the um, lepo, the guy who I had on this show, and he wouldn't shut up. He kept talking. He kept, he kept, you know, saying stupid things. And eventually, I hung up on him. Right? And I exposed him. I told you exactly who he is. He's a librarian from New Mexico. So Swaggart is uh, Dave Swaggart is is George Webb, the conspiracy theorist, the confirmed conspiracy theorist. George Webb. This is this is his brother. Uh, this is his brother. They're, they're, uh, Schoenberger has a long history of doing this stuff uh, as well. Gang stalking. All right, stalking people, all right? So Dave Swaggart, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of videos. We might be here for a while. I don't know how long this is going to take. So we're just going to do it. We're just going to flush it out. I have a lot of evidence. I'm not going to throw it all out today, but I have a lot of evidence going forward that may, in fact, put this. Now, this is speculation. This part of it is not evidence-based yet, but the evidence, as the evidence piles, it is pointing to certainly one A new name we're going to talk about. His name is uh, Justin Hess, who three years ago on this date was the guy, the young kid that shot his 61-year-old mother, right, Um, and killed her and then went on and stabbed somebody else. So Schoenberger, Swaggart, Cromer, YouTubers known, they develop uh, uh, trauma-based video content, right, trauma-based video content. They called it, um, I think Lepo referred to it as uh, humiliation humor. Humiliation humor. Let's humiliate you and call it humor. Right? Uh, so it's trauma-based video content to, tormented, to torment targeted individuals like Justin Hess, who shot a 61-year-old mother, and, and Anthony Camillo, who murdered Frankie Cali, the boss of the Gambino crime family. Uh, we didn't forget about it, man. We're not going to forget. As those names come up, we only we're getting very close to knowing, to know exactly who Camillo was programmed by, right? Who programmed 
um, Mr. Hess. We have evidence now on the table. I'm going to show you recorded evidence that leads it right back to this, this circle of, of creeps. Dave Acton, Thomas Schoenberger, possibly Daniel Cromer. Right? All three YouTubers are they're puppet masters. Cromer is probably more of a victim. And there's also another name. Her name is uh, All Seeing You that we're going to talk about too. We're going to go into her video. She did a confessional video, and I want to put that on the record too, where she, she defines the gang. She defines the inner workings of the gang. She also talks about how money changes hands, how orders are given right, within this, this clique. And someone always asks me, what is the point of this? What is the point of having an extortion ring like this where you could extort people to drive people to murder or drive people to do outrageous, crazy stalking activity? Well, it is, there is value in that in an election season. Right? where if someone needs uh, to sow the seeds of discontent or craziness in a certain area of politics, you can, you can uh, uh, approach one of these knuckleheads and say, okay, oh, you know, give me uh, 50 grand and uh, we'll go over there and we'll sue this guy and we'll, we'll shut this guy down and we'll, we'll attack this, this guy and, then, and we'll, we'll maybe, uh, maybe we'll have a Caesar Sayoc on our hands where you know, we'll get some crazy guy to uh, mail bombs to uh, prominent Democrats and will swing an election. Right, so there, there is a theoretical, a theoretical motive, which is to control narrative. Theoretical, right? That's what it is. Now, has any, have any of these people actually cashed in on this? That is speculation because we don't know. We do know that Schoenberger has, has tried several failed businesses. One, he, he touts some some business where he took money from a, a prominent uh, Republican Fox News guy, Batowski, where he took $40,000 and the thing went belly up. Uh, there's, there, are, there is some evidence where, but that's, again, that, that's speculation. But the bottom line is that they're an online, um, online, their online followers are groomed to carry out uh, uh, gruesome murders. And that's what we're trying, that's what we're finding out. So, Let's, uh, let's dive in and um, let's talk about this guy because I know a lot of people aren't really familiar. I'll just bring you up to speed on this. So this is Anthony Camillo. He's what I call the QAnon killer. He's the Staten Island man, uh, 24 years old Staten Island man who shot and killed Frankie Cali, the boss of the Gambino crime family, shot him dead in front of his house, emptied his gun on Frankie Cali. Everybody thought it was a mob hit. Everybody thought that it was... Um, that it was related to his relationship with Frankie Callie's niece. All of those proved not to be true, at least this far, right? At least thus far, none of it is conclusive. The mob has not said that this, was, this guy was a hitman. They haven't claimed it. Usually in mob hits, the, the uh, uh, opposing side of the mob claims the hit so that they can, uh, they can you know, uh, fill the power vacuum. That has not happened. So, but what, what has happened is Camillo's lawyer, Robert Gottlieb, making a very, very strong case that, that Anthony Camillo was in fact radicalized online. He says QAnon, but I think QAnon ultimately is the bigger picture because QAnon in itself is not a, uh, a uh, conspiracy um, uh, extortion ring, a smaller ring. It has to be, to get someone to do something crazy like that generally has to be, uh, it has to be focused. The target has to be very focused. And then the encirclement attacks, everybody around the target starts to attack the target to get him to, to radicalize him. And, and again, that's, that's what happened. That's my, my belief on Camillo. And as, as the court documents come out, we need to know what was his screen names online? Where was he? Not just a channel, 4chan, but where was he on YouTube? Where was he on Facebook? Where was he on Twitter? What, what behind the scenes uh, discourses was he invited into to talk? What phone calls did he receive? What screwballs were on top of this guy? That's what we want to find out. 
So here's something very interesting. Here's a screwball that we actually have evidence, the further evidence that which screwballs were actually on top of this guy. So this is, this is the second guy in, in the uh, picture. This is Justin Hess. And Justin Hess uh, shot and killed um, shot and killed his mother. Let's watch the story. And he was found stabbed to death at a Sandy Springs storage facility over the weekend. Now, police have arrested a man for that murder and say he's the same man who killed his own mother just moments before. Now, Fox Eyes' Nathalie Pozo joins us now live from Sandy Springs to explain. Nathalie? Well, Russ, people who knew Bill Haynes tell me he was loved by everyone. He was a music and drama teacher here. Just stand by. Bill, they're, they're describing the second victim of Justin Hess. The second victim. At E. Rivers Elementary School in Atlanta. Some people posting on social media today about the impact he had on their children and how he went above and beyond when teaching them. One friend tells me Haynes did not have any children of his own, but his students were his children. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. A community remembering this man, 53-year-old Bill Haynes, a beloved music teacher and conductor for the Alpharetta City Band. He had a tremendous impact on people because he, he, he was open, he was very congenial, and he... This part of it has nothing to do with it. It's coming up. Just stand by. Did whatever he could to help them. The Alpharetta City Band's founder and program supervisor remembers hiring Haynes 16 years ago after a month-long audition. After he finished his month, I said, well, does anybody else have any other suggestions? And they said, why? He's... He's perfect for the job, and everybody likes him. Sandy Springs police say Haynes was found stabbed several times at this extra space storage facility on Roswell Road Saturday night. His red Audi was missing and found at the scene of an earlier homicide in Cobb County. Police say 31-year-old Justin Hess killed his 61-year-old mother at their home and believe he killed Haynes after fleeing the scene. Before I could do it. Okay, so there it is. There is the report from... It's actually one, it's three years to the date, December 19, 2016, and it's Fox 5 reporting. Anything to notify the band, I, I just had to verify it because I couldn't believe it. Day students and staff at X5. Mr. Haynes came to us from Fulton County Schema for grades. This is a charge with. And Hess is charged with aggravated assault and felony murder. He remains behind bars tonight at the Cobb County Jail without bond. Reporting live tonight in Atlanta, Nathalie Pozo, Fox 5 News. All right, so it was an Atlanta situation, right? So, so now you know who Justin, Justin Hess is, right? Justin Hess. Just remember that name. We're just going to move forward with a little, with something else. Now, okay. So, so how does the extortion ring work? How does the bullying how does the bullying work? We're going to look at the, the actual gang, and I'm going to try my best to explain this clear and, and in a way that you can understand. Why, first of all, why was I targeted? Marcus Conti, investigative reporter, YouTube journalist, whatever you want to fucking call me, right? I'm targeted by these guys, not because they think I'm a, a Justin Hess. Maybe they do. Maybe they think I'm crazy because I look crazy. But they're, they're, mostly, they're mostly targeting someone like myself or Lestat or Defango or Lift Avail because we're, we're what's called influencers. We're people that when we speak, people listen, right? So, you, so they target the influencers to promote their ridiculous stories and, and cover for the fact that it is, in fact, a stalking ring, a, an extortion ring. A ring of blackmail. So let me let me show you. I'll, I want to show you one of the characters. His name is is um, his name. Let's well, you know what. Let's let's look at let's look at all seeing you first because this is this is one of the most fascinating, revealing um, clips that I've I've seen. We're gonna. What I just showed you was a letter that she received after this video came out from one of the stalkers, and that's Thomas Schoenberger. So we'll. Let's look at, let's just look at what she has to say defining the gang. Listen to this. Listen to this. So YouTube has been a real eye-opening experience for me. 
I have consistently been seeking, like actively looking for partners to create. So who is all seeing you? Who is this person? Right. Right. She is partners in one of the online, um, uh, I guess the grooming sites and that's teenage FBI. I didn't, I don't even want to say the name because you go there and it's just, a, it's just a systematic, um, uh, uh, chat room of hate. It's put the target on the screen and then hate the target. Now, unfortunately for all seeing you, I think that she was partially a victim in the case where, but again, once you're, once you're in a ring, once you're in a gang, you then are an accomplice to all of the things that the, that the gang commits. So when you're doing heinous crimes, when you're, you know, aggravated harassment over and over again, harassing people, mocking them, defaming them, creating frivolous lawsuits, backing those frivolous lawsuits with online commentary that supports it, you then become an accomplice. So all seeing you is in fact an accomplice to the the, the greater ring of Schoenberger, um, uh, uh, Acton, and Cromer, right, to some degree. But here, here's how she became victimized. Just listen to it. Listen to it again. We have it in their own words. I'm not saying it. She's saying it. With, to write with, to bounce ideas off of. To she was just. She's a talented. She's a talented graphic designer, and she's looking around for people to work with. Right? right? She's. She's not. She's not wealthy. Right? You know, do something while we've got this opportunity to live the way we want and apparently i'm not cut out for it and, uh, evidently based on history with the people that i've chosen to work with i don't know either i'm just really bad as a partner or the little tiny group that exists in the truth community right truth truthers that little tiny crew is full of psychos who are just hell-bent on being as shitty as possible and they only have each other to talk to so they don't see anything wrong with it because they just go behind each other and say good job good job you made that one cry today score or you got that person to quit the internet or this person might have killed themselves now because of some shit that you did to them for months and months and months and why Somebody, you might have gotten somebody to kill themselves, kill themselves, or maybe kill somebody else, commit homicide or, or, or suicide. What? This is online. This is online chatter. This is online fun. Well, it's been in some ways very beneficial to me because when I showed up, I had a whole set of issues where I couldn't get along in the world. I was so full of outrage and I was so discontented and out of place when I got into it and started making acquaintances. So she's, she's feeling bro emotionally broken and, and she finds the cult. Right? She finds the group and they say, oh, come to us, right? So warm and inviting, like a, you know, like a warm vagina. Come to us. Come to us. We'll take care of you. Right? Right? They're preying on the emotionally broken people that would, would be vulnerable to something like, like they're getting into. Right? Listen. And making videos, suddenly I was getting appreciation and recognition and uh, I blossomed. And the chat troll stuff, the all seeing you, starting out as an anti hero. I mean, let's face it, it's pretty much just out and out villain. But getting to play around in the chat with people where it was safe to do so and it was okay and it was funny and like that, at the beginning it was a lot of fun. And it gave me sort of a voice that I didn't have before. And it inspired me when I would see people doing original stuff. I, I wanted to do that too. So over the years I've developed some skills that I didn't realize when I got started, but then I had a little talent for storytelling and music editing and graphics and doing like collage, video collage, taking a little of this and a little of this and putting them together in a way that you might not normally, you know, expect to see them. And so for me it's like, 
as hard as it was and as close as I came to just total self-destruction in the midst of all the, the uh, venom and abuse and yeah. being able to develop those skills, learning as I was going, it's, it's an invaluable experience. That so she's talking about the gang, right? She has an insight into the teenage FBI gang of, Schom uh, of Cro Cromer, Schoenberger, and Dave Acton. She's in there, and she and and also another name, Frank Bacon or Tyrone Simpson. I, I don't know who that is. Uh, so so she's she's and I'm sure I'm going to find out who they are because I'm saying a name and that's an invitation to come and start fucking with me. Go ahead because you just you just get piled right on your your evidence gets piled right on the record. So fuck you, right? fuck you in advance. Uh, so 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 all seeing you is telling you she's telling you giving you a. A window into the in giving you an inside window into what these guys are doing right? and there's more there's a lot more just bear with me let me cue it up for you All right so so here's the emotional attachment part watch this there's this thing that you do and like a lot of people have picked up on it where you get mm, emotionally bent out of shape if you feel that you're not receiving enough attention or that you're being excluded from the group and I think, personally, I think that is what brought you to the point where you're willing to be a mouthpiece for Thomas and for Frank Bacon without any consideration for the impact that you're going to have on whoever they tell you to talk shit about. The impact on the people they tell you to talk shit about. So it's an instruction. They're being, they're, te they're directing, they're puppet masters. They're directing the lower level worker, the lower level victim to target people, targeting people online. That's what they're talking about. That's what she's talking about. And that sucks. I mean, I used to really admire you for your, your solidness. You were somebody that i looked to when i was feeling kind of flimsy like i was floating off into the stratosphere i would call you up and say help ground me because i believed that your character and your integrity and your compassion for people was something that i was lacking and i turned to you for that and the last thing that you did with me I don't even fucking recognize you. I don't know you. I don't know you at all. You're not the same guy that I had in my mind. Or maybe this has been you all along and I was just really gullible or something. Yes, you were. They, it is who they are all along. And yes, all seeing you, you are gullible. Maybe I wanted to see those things in you when they never existed. I don't know. And I'm never going to know because I'm never going to ask. Right? Right. Spimbler. Bibbly, 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 bibbly. Seeing you continue to use the art that I made for you while talking shit about me and doing nothing to try and fucking help me. It's kind of gross. Can you possibly make something of your own? Can you manufacture the skill and creativity and the talent to come up with something of your own? So she's saying they're basically ripping her off. They're using her like a like a you know like a cheap rug. They're using her for her for her talents. No money is changing hands. They're not paying her. They're using her with the expectation that someday, someday you're going to be part of our crew. But we need one more favor. That's, that's extortion, and in, in many senses, it is an extortion ring. Oh, wait. Go ahead. Take your time. Whatever. Thomas, on the other hand, I don't get it. I really don't get it. He has a lot of people, not just Bibbler, there's a bunch of people that go around saying and doing whatever he wants. I used to be one of them. I think it goes back to that whole idea that someday he's going to be wealthy and he'll reward people. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. Even if he does manage to make some money and get himself out of Motel 6, you really think he's going to reward you? So she's defining, she's defining Schoenberger, who Schoenberger right now has a lawsuit uh, pending against him by a gentleman named Gabe Hoffman. 
a documentary filmmaker and uh, a Wall Street guy. And Schoenberger has been running from service. He's, he's been eluding service. So what she's saying, what, what All Seeing You is saying is that Schoenberger doesn't even, he doesn't pay anybody. He doesn't have any source of money. All he does is take. And that's fascinating because a lot of the people that go down this rabbit hole think that they're somehow one day going to be employed as a paid troll. And, and, then, and, and this guy, Schoenberger and Acton and, and the rest of them are going to pay them to do the dirty work. No, they're not going to pay you. They're going to blackmail you. They're going to take personal information about you and then threaten to smear you online. Ah, see, that's what they do. That's the real, that's the blackmail ring. It, it operates, attack the, um, attack the content creators by smearing them, threaten with frivolous lawsuits, whatever. And at a, at a more grounds, uh, grassroots level, you take the people that come into the cult, the casual chatters, and you, you radicalize them, right? And as, as All Seeing You said, it's a very small group, and they all co-sign each other's bullshit. Oh, yeah, you are miserable to that guy. Good job. Oh, you got that guy to, to, to shoot his gun. Fantastic. Right? Fucking psychopath. Oh, you got that guy so riled up in a knot he can't sleep at night. That's what it is. Right? Look at look at uh, the Tooth Fairy, right? Who I think I mean I had her on the show, right? Uh, Denise Matow. I had her on the show, right? Because I thought I wanted to know if she was crazy, or was she just uh, a victim uh, of these scumbags, or is she a player in her in her own right? And you know, in in my analysis of interviewing Denise Matow, I found that she wasn't crazy at all. And that she was quite aware of what she was doing and what they were doing to her. And, but I, th- I do think that there is a certain degree of paranoia because after that interview, she then made a bunch of vi- vile, disgusting videos about me calling me every name in the book when all I did was give, a, give her a platform to speak. Now, I, I pick, my, you know, pick my fights wisely, right? She's no... There's no reason to fight with a with a with some tooth fairy lady from Texas, because I believe that she's victimized by these people. She's gaslit, and she doesn't have the ability to see. You know, every time this, every time they change the story, she follows the story. She follows the the gaslighting campaign on her. So she's also a victim, and they've you know brutalized this lady. They've sent all kinds of shit to her. Uh, to her area, Dave Acton has has repeatedly mailed um, uh, frivolous frivolous allegations to her municipalities, her the state police, the FBI, right? And then see, they're all victims. That's the thing, right? Dave Acton is currently in a federal lawsuit with Jason Goodman, claiming to be the victim. Right? Schoenberger is is. Has been in is a two-time felony convicted stalker, two-time felony convicted stalker, right? And has a pile of restraining orders this high. Has been in so many lit- litigations as a defendant, right? And he claims to be a victim as well. Why are these guys online twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week, antagonizing people, and then they turn around and say we're the victim? How ridiculous. Cromer as well. Cromer is a ringleader. He's the guy in the circus who's saying, and now, and now in this corner, and may bring your attention to, to, uh, to ring number three, and over here in ring number two, watch the, watch the, uh, the, the beating of uh, Tooth Fairy, and then ding, 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 he rings his bell, and then over here, there's another assassination. Watch Conti get dragged through the mud, and oh, he's got fake teeth and fake hair, and blah, 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 right? So, so Cromer is the is the circus leader in the crew. Right? And there's other players too, but these are the these are the prominent ones. So let's get back to all seeing you for one second. He doesn't share. I mean, has he ever done anything so far? So she confirms that Schoenberg is nothing but a bloodsucker. That's all he is. He he sucks. He takes, he takes, he takes, and and everybody, everybody that he comes in contact with, just like Dave Acton, all of them are victims. For just take? 
It's something to think about. Anyway, the point is, I have this long, long history with Thomas, and I've got all these details that I could talk about here that would show what a sleazeball liar he is, and always has been, and probably always will be. But, if I wanted to do that, I wouldn't have closed my Twitter. I wouldn't have gotten off Discord and isolated myself from all of you. And I certainly wouldn't have made my videos private. You know, I'd be making more videos. I'd be actively fighting with the guy. But here's why I'm not. Because he needs that. He requires adversaries. If he's going to stay a victim and he's going to have new content for himself, he has to have people who fucking hate him and want to fight. And... See, that's a, that's a bit of a, a, a lowball view of what's going on. He does need, Schoenberger needs to, to remain a victim, but not just for his content, but for his, his extortion ring where he gets suckers to pay him to, to go after people and then everybody in the, in the mix gets screwed, right? It's a, little more, it's a little more deep than simply a guy who plays the victim to get online content, right? it's it's deeper, it, and I, as I said, you're going to see it results sometimes in murder, right? With the with the guy, I told you, keep Justin Hess, keep keep him in mind because these guys, this ring, this extortion ring has a direct connection back to Justin Hess, as I'm going to show you. I don't want to fight with anybody. <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, one thing I would like to say is that when he's telling his story about how he helped me when I was desperate for money, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. He got Lepo to do it. And Lepo didn't even have any money. Still doesn't. As far as I know. I haven't talked to Lepo in weeks. That's a sad story. I'll get to that in a minute. But Thomas, for fuck's sake, quit lying. Just fuck off. Fuck off. I mean, there are lots of people out there that will be happy to continue to be sleazy fuckers with you. And just fight, 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 right? Right, 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 right. I'm not one of them. I don't deserve it. I've been nothing but kind to you. Except for just then when I called you a sleazy liar. Because you're a sleazy fucking liar. No, really. Guy, get your shit together. Get yourself cleaned up. Get a haircut. Maybe do a little jogging. Get the fuck out of the fucking Inglewood Motel 6. She calls him out. Inglewood Motel 6. So if... Anybody wants to pass that information on to Gabe Hoffman, Inglewood Motel 6 is possibly where Schoenberger can be found. Now, I don't know Inglewood, California, Inglewood, Ohio. I, I have no idea, but All Seeing You certainly does know because she just said it, right? So we may have a, we may have a uh, you know, a 1020 on uh, Mr. Schoenberger. Go rent an apartment. Maybe get a girlfriend. Go make some music. Hang out with artists. Stop being a fucking scumbag. And leave me alone. Really, just leave me alone. Oh, I hate you so much. Mm. Or not. Or not. Uh, so, so that's that's her take on one of the stalkers. And I want you to hear the relationship with Lepo, which is very interesting. It is too. exactly where they are. It's um. It's interesting because she talks about the exchange, how money changed hands. Listen to how money finally, at, at some point, some mysterious hand comes in from out of nowhere and gives them money. Listen. Oh, no. So this is something that I want to talk about, but I also kind of don't want to talk about. Mm, I've got mixed feelings about this, and it's Lepo. Lepo, Lepo, Lepo. Dan and I did some really good work together. What a great writing partner. I loved working with him. And, well, here's the thing. He cares a lot about his art and himself. And those are the two things that you can count on him to care about. And when I introduced him to Thomas and Tyrone, the guys, I guess, sort of had their own plans for him and didn't need me around. And Thomas at the time was still... So you, you have it. It's pretty much defined how the crowd took over Dan Cromer. Dan Cromer, he thinks he's, you know, a little librarian from wherever. And he creates this little website. And you see how the extortion ring moves in. Schoenberger, they bully their way in. They push in. They don't ask. They push their fucking way in with acting. Still friendly. But that changed, right? Right. When the people around the show 
showing up with nasty messages from Tyrone and Thomas all the time. All the time. And I was like, uh, hey, Dan, huh? uh, you want to do something here? You want to, like, uh, tell them, hey, that's my writing partner and my, uh, imaginary internet girlfriend type person. Please don't chase her off. I like her and I don't want her to leave. He, he was like, no, I'm not doing that. That'll make me look weak and they'll just torture me over it and then not... So there, there she, she, she tells you that Dan Cromer is afraid of the guys. She, Cromer is afraid of Schoenberger and Acton, the guys and, and this Tyrone whatever guy. Right? She's afraid of the crew that surrounds, that he's afraid of the crew that surrounds his own show, the show that he created and brought this girl in to do the work, to do some work. Right? Fear. Right? The guy is not, it's not a nice, it's, it's a hostile takeover is what it is. And he let, he's let, he let it happen. He's letting it happen. I stop treating me like shit, so I'm not doing any of that. Maybe it would have been a disaster. Maybe he's right. Maybe, you know, considering how scuzzy these fuckers are, they would have seen that as an opportunity to really start tearing shit up. I don't know. It's hard for me to imagine just because I can't comprehend that mindset. Man, you guys are like the dregs of YouTube. And that's saying a lot because it's a fucked up place and you're on the bottom. Ugh. Whatever. The thing with Dan though is that he was putting so many hours into that show that he wasn't working at all he wasn't making any money and i kept saying hey you might want to start asking people for some money if you want to do this full time like you're doing you're gonna have to figure out some way to support yourself get some help but he's the kind of guy he won't ask he will never ever ask and he didn't want me to ask because he didn't want me to go discussing his private business that was all fucked up with anybody that might be able to help him Anyway, at the very last minute, one of our fans... I'm talking to you. You know who you are. Thank you. They gave me a loan. A loan for what he needed to keep him from being homeless. And A fan gave them a loan. Gave them what they needed. Who's the fan? Who's the fan that bailed out two starving artists in... I believe, I believe All Seeing You is in... Um, is in uh, New Orleans and Cromer is in New Mexico, but who bailed them out? Who is the fan that gave them the loan? Could that fan be Dave Acton? Could that fan be, I don't know, millionaire Steve Outram? Hmm, what fan? What fan has that kind of resources to just come and bail out two schmucks on YouTube? And why? Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to bail out two schmucks on YouTube? But nonetheless, somebody did. You see how the money comes in when they're on the balls of their ass? It's not like, here, here's some money and do what we tell you to do. No. Here's, here's, here, we're going to make you fucking miserable. And, and then you're going to do exactly what we tell you to do until we drive you into the ground. And then we're going to give you just enough to survive and keep your mouth the fuck shut. It's extortion. Right? It's, it's hostile takeover. Right? It's racketeering. Right, it falls into you can categorize that kind of behavior into Rico. I, I gave him the money, you know, and I'm not like kind of really in a position where I can afford to just be handing people money, you know. I don't have it, obviously, or I wouldn't be alone to do it. <laughs> I don't know what can I do. I can't just sit there and watch somebody I care about slide into this inevitable trap where his whole life's gonna be fucked. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I fuck myself up to help him hopefully he'll get over that shit and so at this point I'll, I'll leave i'll leave all seeing you there at this point we know that cromer is is a poor person who is in need of somebody's resources we now know that there's some sort of fan with deep pockets some deep pockets somebody is now fueling if cromer and his crew are still online Right? If they're still up and running, someone is financing Dan Cromer's lifestyle to keep it floating. Right? So let's, let's move on. There's a lot, a lot more to go. We're, wow, we're already at 40 minutes. This is, I mean, this is, this is how long it takes to crack the, crack the code. So the day after, her name is Kerry Wolf, by the way. Sorry, but that's your name, right? 
Kerry Wolf is uh, all seeing you. And after she did this video, Thomas Schoenberger, Parody Lives, I've, I've gotten a, I, I have a, a file of 60 hate messages from Schoenberger from Parody Lives, right? And he sends this in classic Schoenberger form. He sends it to a bunch of other people. Nathan Stoltman, Terrace Renfro, I don't know who that is. He sends it to, to Lepo, uh, Dan Cromer. He sends it to Kerry Wolf and uh, fucking Freddie and this Tyrone Simpson. I have a few old emails from a Tyrone Simpson too. I got to take a look at those. But uh, they were, I just blew them off as irrelevant uh, a long time ago. So what he does is he then begins to smear Kerry one-on-one. -on -one, and he starts to twist the truth. Nathan, Kerry was, uh, Nathan, he's, he's, he's addressing each of the people in the, in the uh, email. So he addresses Nathan and he tells how Kerry was the first one to start a whisper smear campaign. He tells the next one, uh, Terrace, you've always been a very cool guy. And after you and Kerry met uh, and she got, she didn't get what she wanted from you. She told me most horrible things about you and your wife. All right, so he's, again, he's now, Schoenberger is now smearing the girl because she was truthful in her assessment of what was going on. So now the smear campaign, and it gets really ugly in the end, right? It, this, this if, um, if Kerry does know Mr. Schoenberger's address, she should report this to the police because there's a direct threat in it. There is a, a direct threat, right? And that's, 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 with a guy like Schoenberg who already has two stalking felonies, he, they lock him right up. So he talks to Hoax. I don't know who Hoax is. Hoax Wars, right? And he, he, he throws a bunch of lies there. He talks to f fucking Freddy, a bunch of lies. Here, now he, I'm actually mentioned in this email, Dan Cromer. Kerry conspired to destroy your show by going on Marcus Conti and giving him information on you and then suggesting to him that he dox you during an interview. That's totally untrue. What the, the truth of that is that, that I wanted to... Uh, Kerry reached out to me to bring one of them on my show or invite me to be on their show. I don't really even remember. Oh, that, that's what it was. I was invited to go on their show, and I said, no, no, no. Not until one of you comes on my show first and we talk, right? And I said, well, since Lepo is the main guy, have Lepo come on my show. And then Lepo later agreed. There was no conspiracy whatsoever. So you see how she's twisting, how Schoenberg is twisting the fact to make her oppose me, right? And the doxing idea was... I had that I had all of Cromer's information ready to go. And if he was going to be a dick, which he turned out to be, he came on the show and he was a complete asshole and a complete dick, completely unworkable in an interview, and then I started to reveal facts about him using my psychic powers. That was my psychic powers that kicked in. So, show, so Lepo got everything he deserved by coming on my show acting like an asshole. That's why he got doxxed. For acting like an asshole, nothing that the, the girl had said. Um, the reason for this was he, he, she was trying to get back at you. Right? It's just totally not true. She's still upset that uh, uh, you didn't meet her in Santa Fe. She also, she's, she's also the one who leaked your name, and she's also part of Dopey Dave. Now, I told you about the Dopey Dave videos. Go watch them. They're, they're, someone is out there exposing these creeps as well, right? And she's, I guess maybe it's all seeing you. Who knows? The reason why she, she did the Dopey Dave channel was to destroy your using Dave and me as augmentations to your comedy show. It's just, it's bizarre. Now, here's the threat. Here's the threat, right? Um, so uh, this bitch needs to learn a lesson. Hmm, what well, lesson? This bitch needs to learn a lesson. You want to go for it, Kerry? I recorded 14 of your conversations because I didn't trust you, and I still don't. Wow, that's a trustworthy guy. Right? Somebody you definitely want to go into business with. He records you, and then he uses it as blackmail. So he's now, he's now trying to blackmail the girl to shut her fucking mouth. 
You're beneath a cunt in my book, and I will have no problem completely annihilating what's left of your reputation if you continue. Right? The next time you mention me, I'll start to release the conversations. I'll also let everyone else know your phone number and the restaurant you work at. I'll make it physically impossible for you to learn, earn a living. He's going to go after her living. He's going to invade her private space, right, taking it off the board, way off the board. And he's going to go after her work, the people that she works for, and, and, and character, assassinate, character assassinate her. Do I make myself clear? Goodbye, bitch. Um, so, uh, so if Carrie mentioned me again, and I'll go to war with her. Choose your, choose your next move wisely. Right? It's a fucking psychopath. Right? Psychopath. I got a bunch of these kind of emails as well. But I'm always mentioned in, in some of them. So, so here's Schoenberger. Um, so now you're starting to see the picture. Now we're going to lead into... So you see the consequence. That's Schoenberger in action. We're going to look more at Schoenberger. Then we're going to move to Acton and how it relates to this Justin, uh, this Justin character, the guy who shot his mother. Well, the Gabe Hoffman silencing campaign continues. He crowd struck my Joe Blow videos. That's not going to stop me. Uh, you know, someone has to stand up to this bully. And Here he is. Here's Schoenberger. Now, now he's the victim. He's the victim because he called Gabe Hoffman a murderer. He murdered Isaac Cappy. He called Gabe Hoffman a pedophile. He called Gabe Hoffman a, a, a gang stalker. A pedophile, a murderer. That's what Thomas Schoenberger said about Gabe Hoffman. And Gabe Hoffman turned around and hit him with a lawsuit. And Schoenberger's running from that lawsuit. If you're innocent, you come clean. You come forward. You face the music. You say, these are allegations. These allegations are ridiculous. Give me the fucking paper. I'll see you in court, jerk off. Right? That's what an honest person does, but not Schoenberger. Schoenberger plays the victim. Here's, here's, here he is playing the victim. I guess that someone is me. Uh, and I'm not alone. Um, I also want you guys to take a look at what Dave Acton has done with Marcus Conti. Uh, Marcus Conti wouldn't shut his mouth up. Marcus. Con so here's the here's the tag team, right? Anybody who 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 assumes that these two are not working in 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 cahoots with each other is is out of their minds, right? So here you see Schoenberger taking Dave Acton's back for Dave Acton trying to drag me into his frivolous, ridiculous, already debunked lawsuit against Jason Goodman in New York, right? That the, that the, that the judges have already, you know, already thrown 20 frivolous motions in the garbage. And now she's, he's trying to, he's trying to say, good job, Dave, for antagonizing Marcus Conti with a fake lawsuit. It's not a fake lawsuit. It's a frivolous lawsuit. Conti kept on lying. Uh, Marcus Conti has been a defendant <laughs> for. An I don't lie. I give you. I give you the evidence. I give you the. This is in their own words. I'm not making this stuff up. They're telling you in their own words. Number of times in his life, he's had district attorneys investigating him, and he's found to be guilty. So False. three felonies, including uh, assault with a deadly weapon. This guy. False. All false. Bad. Bad news. So. I uh, applaud Mr. Acton for doing that. His name is not Dopey Dave. Um, that was just a pretty dumb move on Marcus Conte. He is, um, Dave is Mr. Acton. I am Mr. Schoenberger. Uh, Lepo is Mr. Cromer. Uh, Steve is Mr. Otram. Right? Let's get some respect going here. So there he defines, the, he de there's Schoenberger defining the gang ring, who you must respect. That is Dave Acton. That's Cromer, that's Lepo, that's Steve Outram, who I suspect may be the guy with the deep pockets, and himself, Schoenberger. Right? There it is. He, do, he just defined it for you. Want to hear it again? Schoenberger defining the gang stalk. Acton, I am Mr. Schoenberger. Uh, Lepo Conte, he is, um, Dave is Mr. Acton. I am Mr. Schoenberger. Uh, Lepo is Mr. Cromer. Uh, Steve is Mr. Otram. Right, let's get some respect. So if that fan that gave the money to Lepo turns out to be Steve Outram, Steve Outram is, is now technically accountable for all of this. 
Now, will we ever? That's a speculation. I'm just speculating. A guy that has is has a net worth of over fifty million dollars. Did he peel off a couple of skins and give it to these people to keep the thing going? I don't know. He seems to be a cheerleader for Dave Acton's fake lawsuit that everybody everybody and their mother knows it's fake, except Steve Outram, who claims to be a researcher. Uh, did did is Steve Outram the the uh, mysterious fan that gave the money? Is he Lepo? Is he? Back going here. As far as Marcus, um, you're an idiot. All right, you're Mister Idiot. This is what they, they just they hurl insults. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They, I have I have forty I, I don't know twenty five thirty forty videos of Schoenberger uh, hurling insults and whatever. Who gives a shit? Fuck you. Yeah, see, I'm showing you a a, a, a modicum of uh, respect. So going back to Gabe Hoffman, Gabe, you know what? I'm not going to yell and scream and call you a bitch like Isaac Cappy did, but I am going to remind you that. Isaac Cappy is now immortalized, and he's not going to go away for the rest of your natural life. He is your personal poltergeist. He's trying to say that, again, he's trying to antagonize Gabe Hoffman, who's suing him, trying to say with no evidence at all, ridiculous evidence, that Gabe Hoffman killed Isaac Cappy. I mean, it's just, it's just so ridiculous. But you see, the, you see the form of extortion. Here's another one. So I want you to take a look at Brandon Young. So here's here they are. Here's Schoenberger talking about the gang, the gang that I've been telling you about all along, and where they are. That they're in this vapor bat records, this this little this little bubble of of extortionists, of manipulators, right? And if you look, you see that they're talking about this reporter. You see, I love SDNY. So you've got Dave. Acton in the inside the chat. Schoenberger is talking about the chat remotely. Lepo is leading the chat. Lepo is leading the show. All right, so all three players coalesce inside of this, inside of this thing. And what they're saying is uh, that that I somehow am on New York State disability. False. <clears throat> He's exposing Marcus Conte. Marcus is on New York State Disability, and uh, Brandon contacted Albany. And, and you see how uh, Dave Acton is very interested in that. He is? Really? Right? As if he's got a piece of information that he can use to blackmail you. That's a blackmail ring. That's how it works. This is what's called gang stalking. This is called blackmail. This is... You know, extortion. This could qualify if enough money changes hands. If we find out that the friend is well, the fan is well financing them, we could, we, we have Rico. And found out he's also not paying his taxes. So uh, there's something going on here. And so, so again, it, 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 it raises the question why are 60 year old men, Schoenberger, and acting, spending 24 hours a day, seven days a week, tr stalking people, getting dirt on people, alleged dirt. I don't even know who, who this Brandon Young is. Right? But gathering information and using it against people for what reason? What is the reason for doing it? Right? I mean, is it, can you, can you really see the, the, the the most profound part of Dave Acton is that Dave Acton is currently in court right now trying to convince two federal judges that he's a victim. Right? Now, I have personally sent information to that judge to show that he is actually a predator. One email, and then I showed the I Had a Dream video where he's whipping reporters into his wild fantasies about about uh, domestic terror blowing up ports, port cities and boats. And so I, I've sent now two, two emails to the uh, presiding judges so they know who he is, that the FBI has also been informed. This is your civil duty. When you see something like this, you have to report these people, right? And they, what they do is they turn around and report you for, some, for something frivolous. Right? So you're very good at it, right? Or are they very good? I don't know. I don't think they're very good at it because 
if you're very good at it, I wouldn't have all your videos. If you're, if you're a well-oiled extortion ring, I wouldn't have all your videos to use. Everything I say, everything, every claim that I've made in this video and other videos, I have, I have recorded evidence to prove it in your own words, Acton, Schoenberger, and Cromer. Everything that I'm saying, I have evidence to prove it in your own words, whether it's on YouTube right here, right now, or in a court of law down the road, or in a, in a conversation to the FBI. Everything that I'm saying is in your own words. Do you realize what you're doing? When, you, when, you're, in a, when you're in a ditch, stop digging. Right? Stop digging. You're, you're already buried. Uh, so that's, that's the extortion ring. So now let's look at the I Had a Dream video a little bit. And we're getting to the best part of it. How it ties into murder for hire or murder for... Not murder for hire. That's, I'll take that back. I scratched that. It's not murder for hire. It's, it's drive someone to the breaking point. Right? Who would sustain some kind of a, a, an assault like this? I sustain it because I'm a researcher. I'm an investigative reporter. I'm the guy who exposed, you know, the, the, a city municipality uh, in New York City, a ticket quota that stole $600 million from taxpayers over the course of 30 years. I exposed the ticket quota in New York City for the Department of Sanitation and the uh, Department of Traffic who write traffic tickets. I, Marcus Conti, exposed that on ABC. You can watch the video. Go back and... and uh, Trash for Cash uh, video uh, where I was on ABC exposing the truth about the... That is infamous. That case is... Although I didn't win the case because I'm fighting the, you know, I'm fighting the, the actual city that committed the crime, right? They're, they're, they're judge and jury and court. You're in their court trying to beat them. But I didn't win, I didn't win my own personal injury case and defamation case. But I, and losing a job case, but I certainly won the, the greater war, which I was able to stop a ticket quota. I'm the true whistleblower in this crowd. I, I am the only one who has an actual, an actual track record of actually blowing the whistle and it working and saving taxpayers of New York City $600 million. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I, am, I'm not, I was a, only a sanitation enforcement agent for less than a year. And I'm also, uh, I'll put this on the record as well, I'm also, or was until recently, a, um, a mandatory reporter for the city of New York, for the HRA department. So my, I've, I've been a, a mandatory reporter means is when you see something, you're required to, 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 uh, to uh, call in. You're, you're required to report it, right? So if you see like in, in the case of HRA, if you suspect child abuse, you have to report that. If you suspect someone has a you know, pile of money uh, and is, you know, is, is hiding their resources, you have to report that as well. Right? So, and there's, there's always you know, opportunities where they try to set you up. So I'm a mandatory reporter, so I'm doing my... I'm not at this point right now. I'm not, today, I'm not a mandatory reporter. So, so I just blew my own... You know, I just want you to know who I am. Because there's guys out there saying I'm one thing, but this is who I really am. You know, I had this really crazy dream. It was really super. Why would someone make a video like this? Why would someone do this unless they were a psychopath? Crazy. So there was this lady in Corpus Christi, and she was open with all these cockroaches called Bone Down that has a flamethrower on it. And if you look on eBay, you can buy flamethrower drones. So what they do is when this tanker's coming and they have these little towers on it, the drone flies out and goes to the control tower. It freaks out the pilot and he runs the ship aground. He just steers out of the way because the flame frightens him because if there's any vapors around those LNG tanks, boom, it's three mile instant destruction. If this thing goes up, oh, let's take a look at the rest of the... It's all so going to get clean. So there's Dave Acton explaining to the crowd, to his crowd, his audience, how two reporters, two jerks from New York, are going to kidnap a woman from Corpus Christi and use her home as a, as a, uh, as a, as a place to 
to launch an attack in the port of uh, Corpus Christi using a flamethrowing drone and blowing up LNG tanks. That's Mr. Acton weaving me into the story. And for that, he was reported to the FBI because I'll tell you, when I saw it, I don't watch all the shit, but it's, it, was, it was very convincing. It was very believable. And as a mandatory reporter, I, 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 found, I found it necessary to uh, call it in. And I, I'll do it again. If you do, if you do something stupid like this, you'll be fucking called on, in on the FBI again. Uh, so for the record, Acton, I have 60-plus videos thus far. We're just going to use video evidence and some, some email evidence, but that's not the damning stuff. These guys say it in their own words. You know it's them. It is their voice. It's unedited. It's documented on, on YouTube. 60-plus right? videos of Acton attacking this reporter. And why? To destabilize, to emotionally try to break down the person. It's stalking. Over and over again, what, how did I encounter Dave Acton? I interviewed his brother, George Webb, over a year ago. And maybe a little before that, I was on uh, Jason Goodman's show maybe twice because Jason Goodman was interested in my story of whistleblowing. I was the whistleblower. And, and, and Jason approached me. I went on Jason's show once, and then we did a follow-up in front of the court a second time. There was actually a third interview that never aired for whatever reason. And then for some reason, I believe Acton somehow got in Jason's head and tried to, tried to imply that somehow I was against him. And then that was the end of that relationship. And the, the other episode you saw was when I ran into Jason over a year, you know, six months ago when at the Jeffrey Epstein trial where Jason, Epst uh, where Jason Goodman sticks a, uh, an umbrella in my face and tries to, you know, take out my eyeball and knock my camera out of my hand. All right, so, so you see, you see who came first. Schoenberger came much later. Schoenberger, I was talking to Defango and Schoenberger appears. All of the predators approach you. You don't approach them. I didn't, never went out of my way to approach the stalker. The stalker approached me through, through a third party. Right? And that third party in this case was George Webb, who I had some concerns about during the Jenny Moore murder or death of Jenny Moore that I wanted to ask him about. And that has nothing to do with Dave Acton. That's between myself and George Webb. My relationship with Jason Goodman was that of a, a whistleblower and a publisher. Right? Now I've since you know, converted to a publisher myself. Right? I publish my own stuff. This is what's called publishing. Right? It's reporting and publishing. So, so those are the those are the inter interrelationships. And why is Acton trying to derail Goodman, Conti, Defango, Lestat, anybody that he comes in, in contact with? George Webb. He attacks his own brother. There's probably a hundred videos of Dave Acton attacking his own brother. A hundred videos of Dave Acton attacking. Jason Goodman, a hundred videos of Dave Acton attacking um, Corpus Christi lady, Denise Matow, attacking Quinn Michaels, attacking Defango, hundreds of videos attacking Defango. Why? Is that the, is that the, is that the behavior of a victim? Could anybody in their right mind and right spirit and right understanding of the world that we live in Look at Dave Acton after what I just told you and what he's done as a victim, right? No, everybody, you could safely say that every single person that Dave Acton and Thomas Schoenberger come in contact with are victims of gang stalking, right? And all of the people, the ancillary characters like All Seeing You and Daniel Cromer, and quite possibly Steve Outram, are accomplices because they're aware of what's going on and they're not coming forward. They're not reporting the crime to the proper authorities. So let's move on. So a long time ago, about an hour ago, I told you that this guy, Mr. Um, uh, Justin Hess, Mr. Justin Hess, here he is. Let's listen again. 
her home and believe he killed Haynes after fleeing the scene. Say 31-year-old Justin Hess killed his 61-year-old mother at their home and believe he killed Haynes after fleeing the scene. Before I could do anything. What does one thing have to do with the other? What does Justin Hess, who killed his mother three years ago, have to do with Dave Acton? Is there a direct connection? Bet your fucking ass there's a direct connection. I'm going to show you that direct connection right now. So here is, here is Dave Acton in his own words. Well, what about Justin Woolley? Yeah, you want to talk about Justin Woolley? Everybody, it's Justin Woolley coming at you. You know how I do these videos that I make funny noises about Jason and Marcus Clueless? I did a couple of videos about this kid named Justin Woolley after... I did a couple of videos about Justin Woolley. Now, what kind of videos does, does Dave Acton make? Dave Acton makes aggressive videos designed to defame people. Hold on one second. I'll read I, mean, I just want to read you something. I'll read you something. He, re, he says he, he's a known YouTuber for developing trauma-based video content to torment targeted individuals like Justin Hess, who shot his 61-year-old mother and Camillo, who shot the boss of the Gambino crime family and also threatened to arrest uh, uh, Bill de Blasio uh, and two other people, uh, Adam Schiff and one other person. Right? They're, these are the puppet masters. It's a death cult. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Right? I'm, I'm sorry, I digress. So those are the kind of videos that Dave Acton makes confirmed. I have 61 of them in my possession. I have 40 Thomas Schoenberger videos of the same caliber, all directed at me, all with one frivolous allegation after another. I, I have legal papers that Dave Acton filed in a federal court full of lies that can easily debunk every last bit of it over and over again in his own words through his own videos. He threatened my life in a YouTube video. Coming at you. You know how I do these videos that I make funny noises about Jason and Marcus Clueless? I did a couple of videos about this kid named Justin Woolley after he threatened my life in a YouTube video. Bullets in my body. Hey, listen, you punk. You're 30 years old. You live with your mom. You don't even have a car. You now, do you really think that Justin Woolley reached out in some way to Dave Acton? and made himself, a, that Dave Acton suddenly became, you know, someone that Justin Woolley admired, Justin Hess admired. Absolutely fucking not. It's clear that if you roll it back, I don't have direct evidence of that, but I have a ton of circumstantial evidence that proves that Dave Acton is always the predator, is always the guy who goes after you. And he did, and the guy says, come near me and I'll fucking shoot you. That's what the kid said. Trying to get a ride to the Bundy Ranch with your AR-15. Bullets in. Make funny noises about Jason and Marcus. Clueless! I did a couple of videos about this kid named Justin Woolley after he threatened my life in a YouTube video. Bullets in my body. Hey, listen, you punk. So he antagonizes the target. To the point of making a, a threat. Say, you know what? Come, come near. We don't. I don't know what the actual threat was. And Dave Acton lies like a rug, so we don't really know what the actual threat that the kid made. He, he could have just said, you know what? If you ever come down where, where I am, and because you, you seem pretty dangerous and pretty aggressive, I'll probably fucking shoot you if you come near my house. It's probably something to that degree, which is legitimate. Right? I'll say it. I'll say it here. You come up my stairs, you won't get back down. You're 30 years old. You live with your mom. You don't even have a car. You're trying to get a ride to the Bundy Ranch with your AR-15 arsenal? Uh, kid, just take it easy. I talked to him on the phone once. I said, listen, relax. You're going crazy because he wanted to get a militia to get... So he made videos about him. He talked with him on the phone. All right. Direct contact. Yeah, they're to go to the Texas border to fight the Mexicans or whatever. It's just crazy, crazy. So um, eventually he flipped out when there was a series of videos made. About six months after the videos, he took an AR-15 and unloaded a clip into his mom. So six months after Dave Acton's videos, in his own words, I'm not making it up. In his own words, he tells you six months after he made the videos, Justin, Justin Hess turns an AR-15 AR on his mother and kills her with 17 shots. 
I'm not making it up. He's making, he's telling you. And, and, that, and you've seen the nature of the characters that do this. And then he went to see some high school sweetheart, and she was with her dad, something like that, and he stabbed this other guy. So he killed two people, double hum. He stabbed the music teacher. We saw the report. Side. Kind of an Isaac Cappy thing, you know, six months later. Isaac Cappy jumped off a bridge. It's not an Isaac Cappy thing. They keep trying to, Acton and Schoenberger keep trying to insinuate that, that, that uh, Isaac Cappy, some weird guy from California, was killed by Gabe Hoffman. <laughs> he jumped off a bridge because he was in. He was he was dealing with these crazy people, right? So they're trying to say that rather than that's what Schoenberger's trying to hide. The fact that Schoenberger was up up uh, Isaac Cappy's ass, driving him crazy, trying you know, and then when he finally jumps off a bridge. Schoenberger turns around and says some, some other guy, Gabe Hoffman, killed him. Killed him, right? So that's Schoenberger covering his own trails. He led, Schoenberger and probably Acton led to the death, the, the, the mental breakdown of Isaac Cappy jumping off a bridge. And now they're looking for the scapegoat, put it on Gabe Hoffman and see if we can run with that story for a while. Later, a lot of the YouTube naysayers were saying, well, you know, if Monogram... And Agent, uh, I don't know, what are we going to say, Agent 21? It's Agent 19. So those are two other two, two new names, Monograph, Monograph and Agent 19, are two other names of people that are, are, have been, are documented as having tormented this Justin, uh, this Justin Hess. Right? So that's three people. Right? Acton said it in his own words. He made videos of the guy, and the kid went out and, and, and killed two people. If Monogram and Agent 21 went so hard on the kid, you know, tracking him down and going after him and every little thing, I'll be the first to admit, when he threatened my life, I made sure that everybody from the May to the governor in Georgia knew where this kid lived. So here's Dave Acton admitting that he violated the kid's, his, his, his privacy. He basically, Dave, I have two, video, I have two emails from Dave Acton who, he tried to do that to me. What he does is he sends an email that's copied to the FBI, the, the local police, all kinds of bullshit, the, the local press. Right? And he sends this email around saying that you're a criminal, that in my case, I obstructed justice. I'm, I'm, so, I'm a felony obstructive justice guy, right? Or someone, what else? Um, yeah, I'm obstructing justice. I'm a... I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, malicious prosecution. And what he does is he tries to smear you, basically tries to upset you by sending these emails around. So he, he's admitting that he did it to Justin Hess as well. So he's been on the phone with him. He's made a series of hit videos. He made a series of hit emails. You know, tracking him down and going after him and every little thing. I'll be the first to admit when he threatened my life, I made sure that everybody from the May to the governor in Georgia knew where this kid lived, knew what his story was, because he made it easy. He's walking down the street with an AR-15, making contact with uh, Roswell PD. I mean, I, I could see the patch. I could see the businesses. You talk about your mom. She's got a psychoanalytical license or counseling therapist license. So we find out right where you live, like in about a minute. So uh, if you're going to threaten people on YouTube and threaten to kill them, why? There's no evidence that the kid threatened Dave Acton. There's no evidence of that at all. Let him produce a video. Produce the video. Because they're not showing enough enthusiasm for the Bundy Ranch deal. So if you don't go to the Bundy Ranch, you're not... All right, so then there's other psycho babble. But there you see, there is the connection between Crazy Dave the Dreamer Crazy fucking psychopathic Dave, the gang stalker, and Justin Hess. Now, is there a connection to Anthony Camillo? We're going to find out. One more video of Acton. Oh, and all the older women in the community will go to him so they can talk to him like, oh, you know, just go over to Dopey Dave. What are they? Laura out there all seeing you. Who's the other one? Oh, well... <laughs> Queen Tut, who hides behind Mr. Leakey. She's really funny. Hey. Watch him. Watch it. Watch a grown man. He's going after Queen Tut. 
whoever Queen Tut is. Queen Tut somehow was affiliated with Jason Goodman back in the day, right? He's probably named in, in which is very interesting because Queen Tut is probably named in his latest frivolous lawsuit, and now he's antagonizing the witness. That's called witness tampering. When you go after someone who is is involved in a federal lawsuit that you're prosecuting, and then you're antagonizing that person online, you're, you're witness tampering. So it's probably a felony if someone wanted to prosecute it. Hey, listen, Queen Tut, not only did you know... But just listen to what he says about the woman. It's devastating. Not teach your kid how to treat his brother and say, I'm going to go over to his dormitory room and kill him with a knife, you were dumb enough to call the cops and get police intervention. So indirectly, you're responsible for the police being there, confronting your son. And that's what led to his death. So you made the 911 call. It just hit me today. That's what you're all messed up about. If you wanted to traumatize a mother, any... If, if there's a better, if you could find a better way to tra traumatize a mother, let me know because this is probably the best way. What he's doing is he's traumatizing the mother by saying that the mother was responsible for the death of her son by calling the police. That's what he just said. I didn't say it. He said it. Right? Now, isn't that reminiscent of Tooth Fairy, whose, whose daughter apparently killed herself in... Um, in Massachusetts in 2011. It's very, very similar. The stories themselves are not so similar. But the idea of Dave Acton going after a woman who lost a child is very, very clear. Right. I'm not saying it. Dave Acton is saying it in his own words. If Dave Acton doesn't want people to know who Dave Acton is, he should stop making videos telling us who he is. That you had a hand in his death and you're ripped to shreds. That's why you hate me so much. Because of... Because her, because the police... Because it, it, it doesn't even make sense. All my background in dealing with security and uh, police relations. Dave Acton has no background in any of those things. Dave Acton is likely a trust fund baby. We don't even know his resources. He, he was in the Boy Scouts. He, he may have been in the Army. He probably to the best of our knowledge, has never held an actual job. He may have been a military brat. Nobody, nobody knows. Or he, he, may have, he may be on a trust fund. We don't even know. Public but if he keeps suing people, we're going to find out. Public affairs, news programming, court programming. That's why you're mad. You think I'm the representation of the police. He's none of those things. But you see, the, the, I'll leave it there. So the point is that you see how Dave Acton... Wow, we're already we're over an hour. I'm so sorry, man, but this is good stuff, man. Thank you for for listening to this, and um, I'll sum it up. But you see who the characters are. You see what we're dealing with. We are dealing with a online conspiracy, uh, online blackmail, gang stalking ring. Right? Lestat has done great work showing it. Lestat, if you want to come on the show, we'll talk about what you just saw and what we, what, what what I'm talking about. It's real. That's the point of this. It's, it's fucking, it's, it's as real as real gets, right? And how many of these rings are out there? How many of these, how many people are, how many, how many cells are out there that radicalize people to do egregious acts, right? Now, we don't know for sure who radicalized Anthony Camillo, the guy who killed the Gambino crime boss. We're not sure yet, but we are going to find that out in court. And if it leads back to this cult, this particular group, it's a, it's a no-brainer. What we need to do, again, is find out Anthony Camillo's screen names and such. But it's real. Right? And people will say, well, no, Conti, you're just, you're just obsessed with LARPing and LARPers, and, and it's all just a game, and, and they got you, and they got you by the balls. No, the, the, the reality is that the, foot, the shoe is actually on the other foot where I am the researcher, I am the investigator, and I have been investigating, investigating them now for one year. And they're like the gift that keeps giving. They think you go away. But the, but the, the statue on murder, especially with Jen Moore, there is no statue of limitations on murder. If these clowns drove Jen Moore to kill herself or overdose, 
I want to know about it because I think that that is possibly, at the, at the end of the day, that's what happened with Jen Moore. That's definitely, I believe, what happened with Isaac Cappy. I think that clearly now we have evidence that, that, the, uh, that it can lead to murder. In, in, in Dave Acton's own words, we hear how he instigated a, a, a crazy guy who then turns around and shoots his mother. Uh, so it's very real stuff. Very real. Is it freedom of speech? Is it First Amendment right? Oh, I got a First Amendment right. I could say whatever I want on on uh, on YouTube. There's no consequence. There's no laws that could prevent me from saying what I want to say. Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm I'm a fr- I'm a free American. Uh, it's radicalization online, and um, to me, it's it's disturbing. I I also I think that here's the thing. I think that all seeing you understands what it feels like when you're attacked. I think probably to some degree, Defango knows what it feels like to be attacked. Though Defango is not innocent. Defango has played both sides of this game, so I'll, I'll we'll leave him out of it. Fuck you, Defango, you fucking homo. But the 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 I don't I don't know that, and that, I'm not here to say that because I don't have solid evidence about that. But what I what I what I can tell you is the feeling of being stalked for what appears to be no real reason. And it's, it's a, it, it doesn't affect me anymore because I'm, I'm already past it. And now I'm in, you know, I'm in full target mode where I'm, I'm targeting, I'm, I'm zeroing in on the, psych, the psychosis of this gang, right? And we're trying to diffuse it, trying to break it, trying to, tr- uh, I mean, you know, Mr. Acton thinks he's doing everybody a favor by suing, suing people, but what he's doing is he's dragging this into the courts. He's dragging the whole controversy into the courts because when he responds or he motions, and if his motions stick, then I get to answer in that case, right? So in that case, all of these videos will be supplied to the courts, everything. So it's very real. Look, victims, I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to be targeted. I allowed myself to be targeted to feel what that feels like. It's still going on, and it will certainly go on after this. The spin will be ridiculous. Oh, my God, right? Even in the chats right now, it's going to be ridiculous, right? But that's, that's part, of, part of it. What I want to fi- finalize and say is that victims, people who are genuinely victims, don't act like this. Victims of online stalking, of... of um, blackmail rings of extortion don't act like Acton, Schoenberger, and Cromer. Why? Because they're not the victims. They're the people starting the whole thing. They're the ones who either approach or lure people in for grooming. All right? That's what's going on. So, uh, so uh, you know, guys, chew on that for, for a while. Marcus Conte reporting.